Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World. Today we're here in Bruges, Belgium, my favorite town here in Belgium. It is gorgeous, amazing architecture, amazing beer and mussels and all kinds of good stuff to do when you're here. Heck, there's even a Michelangelo and you'll be shocked how many cool things there are not just here in Bruges, but all over Belgium. And that's why today what we have for you are 10 things that shock tourists when they come here to Belgium. And one of the things I think that shocks people quite a bit is there's three official languages. You'll probably hear at least four languages when you are here but you'll definitely get the feel that you're in two different kind of country cultures when you're in this one country because you have Flanders the Flemish speaking part of the country which has one feel but then you go to Wallonia the French speaking part and there's another feel of it and if you're looking for those official languages there's actually a few towns in the east where they speak German so you'll hear French you'll hear Flemish you'll hear German and of course tourist English because a lot of people speak English here which makes it easier for all of us tourists when we do come and so make sure you do know Danke, well, merci, thank you, and danke, because eventually you're going to use some of those when you are here. But it is shocking when you really do see the differences when you go between Flanders and Wallonia, you actually see the architecture changes, the, the people kind of change a little bit as well, and how they act and stuff like that. And of course, the language changes, but it's still a great country to come visit. So that is, though, the first thing you notice is those differences that are there in the country. Now, the second thing that'll shock you, I would say, is the morning after your first night drinking Belgian beer. Look, Belgium has some of the best beer in the world. And the thing is here, you might have flavored beers. You have just straight up normal Bach beers and stuff like that, like different kinds of beers you'll have. But all the beer here is fantastic. You will not buy anything else but Belgian beer when you're here and drink it. And the thing is, you'll notice they bring it in these kind of smaller glasses. You're like, wait, there's such good beer. I want to have big beers when I'm here. Look, this isn't Bavaria where you have a liter beer. Here you have a nice small beer because it can really kick your butt because the beer here can be very strong and that morning after can be wicked in your head okay so do have a heads up for that but do enjoy the beer here i mean enjoy responsibly but you're going to see so many different beers when you go around in different parts of the country have different beers you're going to try so make sure ask hey what's your local beer and then like they'll give you a list you just go start from the top and we'll work our way down okay but take your time with it because yeah i've had i've i've i found that one out the hard way many many years ago when i was here with my brother now, the third thing that shocks tourists when they come to Belgium is how many just insanely cute towns there are. I mean, yes, you have here in Bruges, there's a Michelangelo, you can see Madonna and Child. You can walk at the Grote Mark, the, the, the big, the main square, you can go there. The churches that are here, it's just amazing. There's a vial of, you know, Jesus's blood right behind me here. There's so many cute little towns going to Ghent and sitting on the riverfront or taking a canal to when you're there, seeing the castle. Go to Liege, which is great for museums and churches and stuff like that. Go there, all down there's so much to see when you're here yes you can go see where napoleon you know finished his campaign you know there's so much to real waterloo that's here as well there's so many cute places you can check out that it's funny because you'll be on the train thinking oh am i at bruges yet or am i Ghent yet oh no that's just another cute you know, Belgian town that you should probably get off and visit. So don't feel that you have to just go to Antwerp and Brussels and, and Bruges. There's a lot of really great little towns to check out when you're here. So feel free to just hop off the train and enjoy that cute little town because there'll be spires and churches and, and cute squares and all kinds of stuff to enjoy when you are there. Another thing that's really cool about all these cute towns, Belgium, and the fourth thing that'll shock you is how accessible Belgium is for travelers. I'll be honest, I've never been anywhere in Europe where I've seen more limited mobility travelers being able to enjoy a city wheelchairs, motorized wheelchairs, normal wheelchairs, people in walkers and stuff like that, as I do here in Belgium, because you have a lot of really flat towns. It's a very flat country. I mean, not everywhere, but a lot of it's very flat and it's very accessible, big walkways, big sidewalks, stuff like that. And it's fantastic and so easy to get around. So if you are, you know, if you're wheelchair brand or maybe you're going someplace with your parents and they can't get around so well, Belgium, super easy to get around in. Also, if you like biking, this place is fantastic for biking to get around because it's relatively easy to ride and the country is set up for bikers as well so that's another cool thing now the fifth thing that shocks people when they come here especially if you're coming here to Bruges is you're gonna find out that there's still World War one munitions that are popping out of the ground you know like the bombs and stuff they dropped in the first world war not just the second world war but the first world war in Flanders fields they're still coming up and the kind of the shocking thing that goes along with those things popping up is when you realize that so many towns were just wiped off the face of the map in the different world wars 
that Belgium rebuilt. I mean, these people are very proud of their country. They're very proud of their regions and their cities. If you go to Ypres, I mean, they rebuilt the city and you'll see the signs. Oh, rebuilt in 1945, rebuilt in 1954. I mean, the town is younger than probably your grandparents, okay? And you're and you're like, wow. And it's just so amazing that you, when you see these things, but it shocks you how much this country really was wiped out, but then a lot of it was rebuilt for us to enjoy and for people to see how wonderful this country can be. Now, the sixth thing that's gonna shock you when you come here and more of a fun thing is how much they really do love the mussels, fries, beer, chocolate, and waffles when you are here. And they really are amazing when you are here. Like, oh, yeah, I guess I should have a Belgian waffle when I'm here. First off, it's not Belgian waffles. They're just waffles, okay? And you'll have that with, you know, the chocolate sauce on top because the chocolate's awesome here in any form, just letting you know. Whether it's chocolate mousse, chocolate sauce, just chocolates, truffles. Oh, my God. So much good chocolate when you're here. And you'll be shy. Like, oh, my God, there's another chocolate place. There's another chocolate place. There's another place that's selling mussels and fries and mussels and fries. And they love it. And it is so good. So if you're one of those people that don't like mayo with your fries just call it the, what they call it get the frit sauce okay the fry sauce and do that instead and enjoy the fries when you are here with the mussels because it is great and the thing is all these little towns they have all these great squares you can eat on and enjoy outside and the people here love to be outside as well so you're gonna be out with the locals which is a really cool thing now the seventh thing that's gonna shock you when you come here though is the price you're going to pay for those fantastic foods when you are here I am NOT gonna lie to you Belgium is not a cheap place Brussels is insanely expensive especially when you have a lot of people there that are on expense accounts and stuff like that that get to like, write off a lot of their bills. But we as tourists, we're not that lucky. And so pricing here in Belgium will get you. And it will be shocking sometimes. You're like, wait, it's a 40 euro menu? That seems a bit high. 25 euros for the mussels? I must, oh, no wonder I'm at a tourist spot. But the thing is, prices are a bit high here. So do prepare your wallet for that shock. So maybe what you do is enjoy your lunch special or something like that. Or what we've done is like, we'll get the mussels and we'll share it amongst the family. And then we'll try other things. Like I had the cheese croquette yesterday and Liam had a little pasta dish. And we had two, actually two things of mussels we all kind of shared around, which worked out really well. And the fries never stop, okay? So you can always get some more of those and they're fantastic. Fantastic, all right? So there is that, but just know the shock to your wallet is legit when you come here. I mean, it's not like Switzerland crazy, but just have a heads up. Now, the only thing that might shock you when you come here is when you're spending all that money on the food and enjoying all the food, it's kind of the unattentive service you might have when you do have when you are here in Belgium. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. In Belgium, they, they don't work on tips. You don't really tip here, okay? So people get a good wage, and so they're working because it's their job. They're not working to help you. They're not working to impress you to give, to give them more tips. So sometimes tourists can get a little frustrated with that. So just be ready for it. I mean, they're professional, don't worry. If you have any like allergies or things like that, you ask them, they'll know, which is awesome. But just know that when they come to take your order, don't think they're gonna come take your drink order, then take your food order, then take your other order and see if you're okay. Just like order everything at once. And it might all come at once, but it's better to just get it out of the way. So everything's in the system versus like waiting for them to come back. So just be a little proactive with the service when you are here and you'll be okay. Now, the ninth thing that's gonna shock you when you come here is how safe you feel when you do come to Belgium. I mean, the thing is, you're going to all these little tiny towns, you're wandering around in the evening and stuff like that, and you feel totally fine. And that's such a great experience. You're really shocked how wonderful it is. But you're also gonna be shocked how not safe you're gonna feel when you go to Brussels, because it's a totally kind of different world when you go there versus going to some of these smaller villages around the country. So do have a heads up. And I think one of the things that where a lot of people get kind of like, mystified or upset or kind of like thrown off is when you're in Brussels, you have to realize there's three different train stations. The North train station, Gare du Nord or Nord, you're not really gonna use that, don't really go there. You have the Central Station or Central, that's where the Grand Palace is, that's where the Mannequin Piece is. You're gonna see the sites there, there's that. And then there's the South Station, which is Zoud or Midi in French, remember all the different languages. That's the one you'll take the Eurostar to London or the Tallies to Paris and stuff like that. So have a heads up for that one. But in general, we have not had any problems having our kids wander around and enjoy the parks and see the other kids around here and playing some soccer with them and stuff like that. No problem whatsoever. We felt very safe with our kids. I felt so safe I even brought my parents here as well. So, you know, if I can bring the grandparents and the kids, you know it's good, all right? And then I think the 10th thing that shocks people when they come here, and I'm going to focus this one on Brussels because this is one of the things that people get really shocked by. Like, is really is like how disappointing, but also how small the Mannequin Peace statue, or sorry, fountain really is. I mean, Mannequin Peace is that statue of the little boy peeing, you know? But the thing is, it's life-size, so he's only like this big. And you're like looking around for it when you're in when you're in Brussels, and you're like, where is it, where is it? And then you'll see all these tourists turned around, looking back into a corner, and you're like, 
well, well, what's going on? And you're like, oh, oh, that's it. Oh, that's it. And so it is kind of shocking how small it is, but it is worthwhile to go see. And when you're going to see the, the, the mannequin piece so many places around the country. So that is one of those things. And and I also I would say is when you're looking at Brussels in general, I think one of the things is I've always been a little bit against Brussels in general in terms of tourists, not because it's a bad city, but it's because people put it in a perspective of it's like New York and Paris and Brussels. Don't think of Brussels that way and you won't be shockingly disappointed. You'll be shockingly happy if you put it more on the, oh, it's like Salzburg or or going to you know Indianapolis or going to Osaka, something like that gives you a better feel. Anyway, the bells are ringing, which means I've got to go in and have some more mussels and fries and beer for like the fifth day in a row because they are really that good. Don't worry, there's other good stuff to have. The rabbit's good, the stew is good, so you'll be okay when you are here. Anyway, I wish y'all the best. Have a great time when you are here in Belgium. We've enjoyed our time here as always and we wish you do too anyway if you want to learn more check us out on our website at waltersworld.com bye from bruges